Hey guys, what's up? I'm Mark and in this channel, I talk a little bit about lifestyle but I mostly talk about business and investments. I'm glad to let you guys know that after four long months since releasing my first video on it, Gcash has finally released Gcrypto. Now I don't know what took them so long to release this but I'm not going to criticize them for it. I'm just glad that after having put this icon in our Gcash app and teasing us about it, Gcrypto is finally here. Now in this video, I'm going to be giving you a quick review of Gcash's Gcrypto and for the most part, I'm going to be comparing this to its most obvious competitor which is the crypto feature available by Amaya. But before anything, even though I've shared with you that I've been excited about this feature, I wanted to let you guys know that crypto is a very volatile, very risky financial instrument. So do watch this video with a little grain of salt. I am not a strong advocate of crypto per se. How I like to proceed with crypto would be following Mark Cuban's advice. Whatever you put there, really just forget about it. You might take 10% and put it in Bitcoin or Ethereum, but if you do that, you've got to pretend you've already lost your money. So what he means about this is that whatever you're putting in crypto would be an amount small enough that you could dismiss as a loss already because crypto is something that's really unparalleled. It's something that we haven't encountered before. So there is no comparison, no historical precedence to this. So before anything, before I go into these features, I wanted to let you guys know that. And you know what? If it goes up in the future, maybe in a year's time, maybe it's 10 years time, anything that you get from crypto would already be a bonus. So again, proceed with a lot of caution and be very prudent. And with that disclaimer in place, let's go. Let's find out what Gcrypto is all about. So there are a handful of observations that I've had about Gcrypto since using it in the last week. When you are trying to buy your first crypto after registration, what's noticeable is that you actually have to fund your Gcrypto wallet separately. For Maya, you can actually use your entire wallet when you are buying crypto. It's not really such a big hassle if I'm totally being honest, but it's just another step that you have to do. So for this minor inconvenience, this is somewhat a point against Gcash. I understand that Gcash is doing this with a third-party provider, which is PDAX or PDAX. Uh, I'm not really sure. It's a little different also with GFunds. GFunds partners with Atram, but you don't have to have a separate wallet for Atram. So uh, I don't know why uh, this is the implementation that Gcash did for Gcrypto. But this is the first note that I just have to point out to you guys. So number two, another notable thing that I can point out about Gcrypto, Gcrypto has launched with 22 different cryptocurrencies. For Maya right now, I counted it's only at 20. So this is a minor note because these things can be added onto or maybe removed from in the future in terms of diversity. Right now, Gcash has the upper hand. Let's move on to number three. Here we are starting to get into the meat of the matter more. When Maya launched, one of the key features that they really pushed would be buying crypto for as little as one peso. So I was actually surprised to see that G Crypto did not match this. You actually can't buy Bitcoin for less than 100 pesos. I guess this would not be such a big thing because you know a one peso investment versus a hundred peso investment in crypto is probably negligible in the grand scheme of things. But perhaps in terms of this feature, making crypto available to the larger sum of people out there, Maya is still making it easier with a lower minimum fee. So let's move on to number four. This time, I actually compared the exchange rate of Maya versus Gcrypto. For those of you who are really familiar with the movement of crypto, you know that it's moving practically every second. Its price is being traded 24-7 and really across the global markets. I had to make these comparisons within seconds of one another. Um, I'm not going to be claiming that it's a perfect comparison, but for the most part, I think my timestamps will show you that uh, these were actually made at least within the same minute. So for this, I'll have to get my notes for you on this. I actually tried to work with an amount of 250 pesos with uh, three different cryptocurrencies. The first one that I tried to exchange would be Bitcoin. So for Bitcoin, 250 pesos at the time of this experiment would have amounted to 
192 of Bitcoin. And for the same 250 pesos, you can get 0.0001910034 of Bitcoin via Maya. So for this instance, Gcash is higher by about 0.5%. So let's move on to experiment number two, trying to buy 250 pesos for Ethereum for Gcash. 250 pesos would amount to 0.00277 of Ethereum, while for Maya, it's at 0.00. 275866. So again, Gcash comes out on top higher, meaning that your 250 pesos would amount more Ethereum rather than Maya. Yeah. And lastly, a crypto that is perhaps newer, younger, a little bit more speculative. So I chose Solana. 250 pesos via Gcash would result into 0.1928. And for Maya, that 250 pesos would amount to 0 0.1915120. So for all instances, Gcash actually gives you a better exchange rate versus Maya. But, and I have to point this out here, I am hoping that Gcash is presenting the accurate amount that you can get from your money because I have a feeling and um, I'm trying to figure it out. I feel like Gcash might be rounding up um, you know that these decimal places, 5th, 6th, 7th, or 8th degree, these still would matter. So it seems that Gcash, Gcrypto is giving a better exchange rate. But again, I hope they are not rounding up because if they are rounding up, this advantage that I'm talking about and giving to Gcrypto would be pretty much eradicated. So um, if you guys know more about this, let me know in the comment section. So moving on to point number five. In my earlier video about Maya Crypto, they actually go through a lot of information, a lot about what the crypto is about and displaying its latest news, latest features. In this case, Gcrypto, although also provides some primer, they don't display as much information. For Maya, they do give those latest news. And these are just links to articles that I'm sure you can Google. But in this case, Maya has some advantage over Gcrypto. This is just a minor feature, but for this purpose of this video, I just wanted to point it out. And lastly, number six, this would be sort of a comparison of Gcrypto and Maya together versus other platforms out there. So for me, I see that Gcrypto and Maya would really be just a starter for you to get into crypto. When you buy or sell out of your crypto position with these two platforms, you are generally going by the market rate. Whatever the price is trading is the only price that you can buy or sell your cryptocurrency. And I guess how this would differ with other platforms, my experience would previously be with Binance and a little bit with eToro. So for these platforms, you can actually set a buy or sell target price. You're not at the mercy of whatever market value of your position at that very moment. For purpose of beginners, that's probably a feature that you won't need, but it's something that you might want in the future. And in my earlier video last year about Maya Crypto, I actually compared the exchange rate of CoinsPH with Maya. CoinsPH actually still comes out better. Maya and Gcrypto are actually very close in terms of their exchange rate. Um, CoinsPH is also for beginners, but I feel that their exchange rates are more friendly and providing you better bang for your buck. So with that, what do I think about Gcash's Gcrypto? Um, I actually think that Maya and Gcrypto are quite similar. I mean, I don't think one is overly advantageous over the other. I wouldn't really consider these as game changers or something that would make me heavily consider one telco e-wallet over the other. I might still consider the other platforms that I mentioned if you really wanted to get deeper into cryptocurrencies. But again, getting deeper into cryptocurrencies might not be the best thing. Ultimately, it's up to you. And my only real advice is that for crypto, only put what you can already lose. If you've liked this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching, guys, and happy investing.